Welcome to Albion TV presents the AO Daily Show, your source of real news in an unreal world, keeping you up to date on the latest news, events, and the great community of Albion Online. Today is Thursday, the 16th of January, 2020, and I'm your host, Chosen, and with me today is my co-host, Bogle. How are you doing this great, fantastic, wonderful day, Bogle? How are you doing today? Are you excited? Tell me about how excited you are. Very much so, yes. I, I'm not the best in uh, giving out of that excitement, but it's. I can assure you it's very, very big inside my heart. I'm very excited for Queen, very excited for the things that are to happen very soon. Um, I am sure a lot of the viewers today share that excitement, and I'm sure a lot of people tuned in today, not only for the gold raffles, but especially for us talking about some more queen details um how are you i'm excited straight up excited hyped yeah i'm ready <laughs> Bogle, this is um the biggest update we've ever had mm -hmm. and the closer we get to it the more confident i get to like just i'm it's gonna work when mm -hmm. we first started hearing about this and they announced that gvgs were going away territories were going to be conquered by zvz warfare there was a big backlash and then it started to just fade away I as we it. revealed more and oh i was thrilled bogle i wrote a very long very artsy fartsy post with lots of um very special graphics and a very angry russian bear about how we needed to get rid of 5v5 gvgs in november of 2017 or sorry 2016 mm -hmm. 2016 holy crap that was a long <laughs> time ago well wow different um, times. But yeah, now it's finally happening. It's uh, it, Queen. It's, happening. it's next week. It's happening on Monday. Uh, this week we get all the juicy info. We get all the juicy details that we have been waiting for for such a long time. Now all the um, quote unquote enterprising guild leaders uh, can plan all of the details in all the fine detail they need to. And um, we will, uh, after we go through the news, cover the resource balance and the territory uh, ownership or conquest rule set. Uh, we started with some of that stuff yesterday. Yeah, it's a big super post, Bogle. It's yeah. not a, a small post. I didn't know that post was going to cover us for the next two weeks. <laughs> that long? Okay. Feels like it. I think I've... I've read like half of this thing. I'm. It's impressive. There's a lot of news here. There's a lot of. Can we call it news? Clarifications and Clarifications. details. As it's calls. details. Yeah. It's the information we needed hmm. to start really uh, knowing what we had to do. Some of this isn't even planning news. Some of the territory stuff is just okay. This is how it happens. Thank you. I needed to know. Finally, I have a clue. And we'll get to that because it's very good. Uh, but let's get quickly to the PSA so we have time for all this great information. Mm -hmm. We can talk about how territories, resources are going to be distributed and probably a lot, a lot on how territories are captured. Okay. So first things first on the docket then today is to remind everybody that this exists, the Queen Super Post. And <laughs> by the way, what we're talking about does exist. This is not a figment of our imagination. We know it's real because we put it in the notes. Yes, yes. Um, that is the first big thing. If you want to bookmark this, I'm sure a lot of people will be asking about that link in your guild, your friends. I think you can link that to everybody who uh, might come back to, uh, you know, get up to date and who is that kind of person who likes to read patch notes. Um, if you are a more... A listening and a client person then you can also recommend this show uh, the last few days and today and probably tomorrow we will talk about all that good stuff so uh, you can just uh, you know gather some stuff while you listen to us and you will be informed just the same almost all right um but first we do have some uh, as you said announcements we had a contest going Mm -hmm. That was the uh, Crystal League staging event. That was the purpose of that was to try out the new signups, the uh, changes to the Crystal League uh, that happened, and that was ongoing until I think yesterday. The uh, winners have been announced, and we are happy to share that with everybody. Of course, all the winners 
uh, receive 1000 gold per player for simply joining the staging test server, uh, queuing up with, you know, a few friends and recording that footage. Um, they decided to uh, reward all valid entries, apparently. All yeah. 11 of them. Uh, even the people who made invalid entries still won, <laughs> except for their invalid entries. Which is nice. It, what it, it worries me because I, I worry, did we have enough people to, to test this? Did it work? Please tell me it worked. Please tell me it was good. Please tell I, me they know that it's going to work. I think I saw some, uh, you know, follow-up questions to some of the... There was one sign-up issue, I think, that was uh, later captured on video. And I think that was discussed. Um, but yeah, congratulations to Jacuzzi, Meat Cup, Meme, Gwindy, Shalbro, Wolf 70 Cursor, OMGTT, and... Spirivio and their respective teams. Uh, you all won gold. Ooh. You should receive that very soon on your main characters. I'm hearing some um, scary news in chat right now. Uh, uh -huh. One of our competent GVGers, I mean, he can show up and he can click yes on a button and oh, put no. the gear on and follow all the directions necessary to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Yet he failed three times to properly sign up for this. Oh, no. And I don't think it was his fault. Uh-oh. Um, so I'm a little concerned when I see this. And so it sounds like there may have been more teams who mm -hmm. tried to participate, but there hmm. was a failure rate, like somewhere along the same as like the PS4. Um, it <laughs> wasn't good. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's hope that this test did its job. Oh, definitely. And and it actually starts to, uh, you know, work it. And we don't find out that we have an even worse failure rate, something along this, the same as the, the Xbox 360. <laughs> we don't need a red ring of death in our Crystal League, do we, boys? No, I don't think so. We want to sign up, get in there and play and have fun and then have somebody actually win a real big prize. Yes. Ten uh, groups. What is that? Actually, not quite ten groups. It was... Um, it 11. looks like nine groups. 11. Nine oh, groups. Well, some no, of them no, are double. Make, yeah. Some of them are double. So uh, at least 99 times, that's 45, 45 people got 1,000 gold. Good things. Good things. I'm glad you uh, are helping right now change the economy that we have here in the world of Albion by buying yourself some pretty slippers. Do it. I need some pretty slippers. Let's do this. Let's move it on. Move. Let's move it on. Battle for Carleon. Another PSA mm. that is time sensitive. So we have to talk about, about it again briefly. It will happen this Sunday uh, as part of the end of season event. Uh, we uh, saw that nice trailer, uh, you know, two days ago where we learned about Don Carleon, uh, which is a interesting name to say the least. I know Shosen, you have been practicing that voice uh, since you saw the character because you like him so much. Not uh, since I saw the character. No, no, that's, that's oh, that you heard him. No, the first time I, I the first time I tried this voice was on Monday. Mm -hmm. Let's let's be clear. This isn't something I've been doing for a year and a half since they <laughs> threw the black market up, and I was like, "This guy's awesome. He needs a voice, and I need to do it." That's not how this worked. Okay, let's be clear. So how, how's your progress going on that? Will we get to hear you doing the Dawn of Carleon for Fanfic Friday tomorrow? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Nice. I will do my... Uh, so I have been practicing both. Mm -hmm. And people have heard it the last couple of days if they watch the show. And I think it gets better every day. A little bit better. Um, I actually have a video for you guys today. Oh. That will play at the end of the show. Before we go into overtime today. Where I do uh, my own version of the, the the video that's out now. Nice. Cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. I thought it would be fun, like a little meme thing, you know? Yeah. The, the Chosen Don, sure. The Don Chosen? Something like this? The I know. He, it's not Don Chosen. The Chosen has nothing to do with it. It's... I, I like the character. I think he's one of the... I, I, I was a fan of him when he came out into the game. As oh. in, he's one of the coolest looking characters in the game. Mm -hmm. Like, he just is. He's just... Has a lot of character to him, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of him. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to do a little something with him. I, I really enjoy the character. Okay. Well, but the reason we learned about this guy in more detail and we learned about all of the background and the impetus of this was the battle for Carleon, which is a the end of season event, which makes the um, 
or I suppose it's on the last day of the Avalonian invasion season that we all have been dealing with for the last two months. Uh, it will happen on Sunday, January 19th at mm -hmm. 21 UTC. Everybody who participates apparently gets a limited supply of free gear sets from the That's dude really in cool. Yeah. That's really cool. See, they keep doing cool things with them, you know? So I, I, I like that they're bringing him back into the story, even if... The, I think the video overall is awesome. So I just want to keep saying that. It's just that I I wish he had a better voice. And I don't think I'm the right person to provide it, honestly. Mm. But I, you know. I like you like to do voices. So I, I know. I like to do voices. So like that's the thing. I think that's what it is. It just, it, it gets me somewhere. It's like somebody call Mark Hamill. Come on. He, he can do this. He does everything else. <laughs> He's clearly looking for work because there's no more Star Wars. I mean, they've got four more Jokers now. Do they need him? Ah, come on. What is he going to do? Bring back Shaun of the Mountain Fairies? I think not. And then at 10 UTC on Monday, on January the 20th, the game will go down for the final maintenance before Queen. And for when Queen goes live, Carleon and the Outlands will be changed forever. And Forever! This change is... Uh, described in so much detail that we need to spend three days going through all of this um and unless we have other psas let's see we will have that as a show oh we do have two show related ones do you want to do them now or later the interviews for queen and the casters psas yeah we i guess we need more casters uh but was right uh, we need more casters we actually already have our first caster who's uh going to be trying the week of uh, release week of Queen release. He's going to come on to the show and and do some free casting for all of you. We have the great, the incomparable, Robin Hooders. <laughs> nice. Okay. He's going to specifically for ZVZs though. He's not a GVG caster. We have some great GVG casters, but Robin Hood really wanted to do some ZVZ casting. He says that we're not as hmm, experienced in high level. ZBZ is him, and it would be good to have <laughs> someone come in who knows what they're talking about and uh, wow. give us a lesson on how ZBZs work. Hello, and excuse I was like, me. Okay. Hello, excuse me. You suck. Let me do this. Yeah. Well, that's honestly that's how I think you should. If you're gonna say something's <laughs> bad, don't say it's bad unless you're willing to do it better. I, like, I appreciate that's that too. My rules. It's, it's... Like, if you're gonna complain about something, hmm. don't complain unless you have a better solution. <laughs> Okay, he, he wants to offer a solution. We'll bring him on. See if he is better. We'll let him try it. And now the whole Zerg will press Q. And then go east. Except for those <laughs> who died. Uh, Queen. All right, Queen, let's see. Uh, superpose, where are you? I think I lost it. Queen superpose. It's, it's, the, it's huge, you Bogle. You can't lose it. It's like, it's gigantic. Well, it, the superpose itself isn't big. Mm -hmm. The things in it are big. It's... I had a joke and I really didn't, I, I know I can't do that one, Bogle. So we're going to move on to something we can talk about. Let's talk about resource distribution changes in the new Outlands. My brain is still hung up on that joke. Don't do it. Move on. Big. Like the big things I know in the game are like Earth Mother. Shh, Bogle, we're... All right, all right. Um... Yes, we talked about hideouts yesterday. We showed hideouts last week in all of their glory and all of the details. We um, went into them. You can you could see the layout on the staging. I think staging right now is down, so we can't hop on there to show that live. Um, but we can talk about the other things we didn't get to talk yesterday after we spent an hour talking about the new hideouts mechanics and rule sets and i think the first one is, is fairly brief that is the resource distribution changes in the new outlands because not only do we get a new map but we also get a slightly different and uh, rebalanced map i suppose is the word um it, it, it's definitely a big change bogle i mean we mm -hmm. have tier two in the Outlands. Apparently. That's something we can get to later, yeah. I so, mean, that's huge. Like, that, that's not the biggest thing. It hurts my though. brain. Well, to, maybe to you it's not. It's not the biggest thing, but it's, it's a... F 
it's an example of some of the fundamental changes. This mm. is how much things have changed. If you've been here with us since the beginning, there was this idea that there always had to be this transportation back and forth. Mm. There always had to be this connection between the Outlands and the Royals. Mm. And I feel like they're severing that. There doesn't need to be this back and forth anymore. Now you can just live there. I'm a, I'm a bit skeptical, but if that works, it works. I, I, I have no opinion on that specifically yet, whether or not it's good to put tier two in there. Um, mm -hmm. But maybe due to the size of the continent and the travel distance, maybe it is a thing at least to try. Um, so what changed? Uh, first off, uh, we still have that system that zones in the Outlands have different tiers and the main resource in these zones will be based on the tier of the zone. They will sort of be equal uh, to that. At least that's where the highest concentration of that type will be and they will still have biomes. So nothing changes there fundamentally. Um, what? But what they did change is that they changed the um, node sizes and the respawn times on some of the resources. Um, yeah, there's some big changes to these. I, yeah. No doubt. Uh, the biggest outstanding one is that apparently now we have tiny tier 7 and 8 nodes that we didn't have before. It used to be the case mm -hmm. that all of the tier 7s and 8s were either 23 and 20 or 27 uh, size wise but now we get for tier 7 uh, 3 and for tier 8 two charged nodes with it with just like four or five per <sighs> node which sounds very small it sounds very small mm -hmm. it makes me wonder how many of these nodes have to be in the world now in order to make up for what we had because i feel like now you have to comb the earth for nodes and clean up everything constantly running around there because i just don't hmm. i don't know how anybody's going to get enough t7 or t8 based off of like hmm. off of this number of charges i don't know i mean i remember that we had the clarification that the overall amount that spawns in the world should be fairly equal to the previous uh, levels the mm -hmm. distribution as to how you get that is going to be different though um and another thing they incorporated was the first design of that didn't have the quote unquote big node, which is equal mm -hmm. to the old one. They at first just wanted to have it reduced into just the tiny nodes. And then they but that's added a, the once, bigger versions later uh, based like, on feedback. 33 hours to 101 hours, depending on you know what the randomness of that particular node is. So it's guaranteed to spawn once every two weeks. Um, <laughs> Well, um, the whole thing about where stuff spawns is a whole different beast um, because that rule set is also, you know, if you have, if you find nodes in the world, they not necessarily will still be there one day later. So they have this thing of, of respawning going on that we can talk about later. Um, but for now, the biggest changes are that we have tiny sevens and eight nodes and that mm -hmm. we get new, you know, big nodes. There are some screenshot uh, shots of these differences, which to me it's look fairly similar, to be honest. It just looks like a bigger sized one. It has more well, branches. You right? will learn it, though, when you're a, right. a craft, like a gatherer. When you gather these and you suddenly come across like a big node, like... These big iron nodes, for example, the metal nodes, they look different. That You're going to notice that. That's that's a big change. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at the difference between the stones, look how big those stones look. They look like they're monoliths. Mm -hmm. Same goes for the wood. Yeah, it's, It is going to be one of these moments where you go, oh, shit, nice. So that's, that's a good thing. And then especially if it's enchanted. Um, mm -hmm. So that's going to be cool. And we get you know, smaller and bigger animals. I think that was one of the things that we didn't have before, you know, like a feral boar and a feral bear. Oh, God. Which is like I wonder the... if they hit like a truck. What? I wonder if they're, you know, more powerful bogo is what I'm uh -huh. saying. I'm wondering if they will 
her chin. Because you can solo them. they look bigger. They look bigger. Well, I'm sure you should be able to solo them, but it might be yeah. a little bit more of a challenge. You might need to use your cooldowns or something. <laughs> Pay attention while you're doing it. Maybe uh, hit your skinning chest so that you're mm. brutal to these you know, animals for a second. Actually use that thing for what it's intended to do. I mean, it's what saves you. Who knows? Yeah. So we, we uh, you know, the other nodes are easy. The animal nodes are a little hard, but we get a hyena, we get a baby uh, rhino, we get sort of a small version um, elephant mammoth there. Um, one thing that said that the if these drop uh, puppies, if they drop mm -hmm. baby animals, the uh, rough drop chance of these should be equivalent to you know whether or not it's a big or small one so it's whatever you had before the drop chance so should stay remain similar um, but it's just cool to have more variety overall and um, that's almost that with that topic already it's just different nodes and the addition you mentioned it at the beginning that tier 5 zones will have tier 2, 3, 4 and 5 what I like is this new T6 desert wolf. Isn't it a hyena? It's a hyena. But it's called but desert it's called wolf, really? Desert wolf. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> it looks it looks like a hyena bogle. It looks like a striped hyena. Like like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, what changed a little bit is that the. Uh, amount of nodes has to go up. You know, if you have it, smaller, it, well, nodes. it has to go. Of yeah. course, it does. If they go down, like they said, it's going to stay the same as to what's in the world now. I actually thought we were going to see more Bogle. I thought we were going to see more T8 in the world because, kind of, of how they're trying to encourage us to ZVC more. Hmm. And if you want people to, I don't know. It, never mind. It's not important. If it's all the same though, and we have the same out there, we're going to have to have more nodes, Bogle. More. <laughs> Nodes. which is good i mean uh, i in my experience it can sometimes be a challenge to find these tier eights when you want to level and you don't quite quite want to hang out you know inside of the big boys uh, areas so it's it might be a good way to give more availability to these to the gatherers um but yeah we'll see uh one thing i asked about there you go that i want you to bring up briefly is how resources spawn um because i think that is something yeah, let's talk about that wasn't quite known really mm -hmm. and um thorn delwin one of the game designers answers the question in regards to uh, node spawning with a zone has certain amount of possible resource positions uh, those can be seen, for example, on the maps offered by Albion Online 2D, which is a great fan site. Google it if you don't know it. And now a certain amount of these positions will be used for nodes based on the tier of the zone and some other parameters, for example, if it's Royals or Outlands. And the process of randomly distributing these resources of a zone happens every day in maintenance. Um, so some of these uh, nodes will also remember uh, when it you know it stayed before the maintenance and the yeah. charges there so when it respawns or charges up it won't just be you know reset every single time so that's an interesting thing small you know thing that not everybody knows that during downtime some of the node locations are shuffling around they have a fixed amount of spawn positions so if you if you really live in a zone and you really know all the locations then you kind of know where stuff could spawn in theory um, but in practice, there is some random stuff um, that might be relevant if you actually 100% want to know your zone. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, I really hope that we see people living out of these zones and gathering out of their zones. That's what I want to see. Hmm. And so if we can figure out how to make that happen, I just, I, Bogle, <laughs> I remember living in my zone for a year. It was great. And then... Yeah, yeah. What was it called? Starfall? The zone? I think. Uh, where we lived. Uh, my favorite was Bandit's Bridge. That was my All favorite right. design All zone. Right. Yeah. We didn't live there for a whole year, hmm. but that's still my favorite one. one. Having yeah. KFC on the other side from us, having Articula Mortis as our friends down the road, fighting against Red Army every day. It, it was good stuff. I miss hmm. it. Hmm. 
Yeah. Well, um, another thing that is sort of uh, related to this, and I think that's our next topic, is um, what happens to the zones when you actually live there and own them. Because if you own a tower, a territory of a mm. zone, then it is possible to increase the uh, the quality of that zone and also the quality of those resource nodes so even though you have you know uh, small size nodes you will probably have ways to you know increase uh, the output of these and that is detailed in the other thing that i'm looking for the uh, open world territory battle rule set which allows you to once you own a territory to upgrade that um so now the question is do we want to look at these resource bonuses first because that's kind of interesting or do we want to go through the hard grind of like figuring out how to, to conquer a territory well let's look at these bonuses real i just want to look at them real quick sure. um because i think this is something we will talk about i mean it is it is market watch thursday hmm. i kind of want to look at it Okay. So Towers. we need to look at the territory conquest because I think it's the like it's still the most important news that we have out. Yes. So, uh, however you conquer a territory tower, uh, there is the option through the Crystal League, if your guild or if uh, your friends win uh, matches started from that tower, to uh, increase the level of that tower. And depending on the tower levels, there are eight different ones, you can receive various bonuses. Um, to cluster, uh, no, to resource yield, to resource enchantment factor, to the NPC guards that are around that uh, tower, to the amount of siphoned energy mages uh, generate for you and season points. And uh, these towers also have a different decay rate if you don't participate in matches from them so it starts at zero at the base at tower one and mm -hmm. then at level two tower level two is fairly easy it's two percent resource yield one point one 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 enchantment factor which is you know ten percent um and ten fifteen percent to damage and hit points of the guards same goes for the seven mages so that's not a lot but it also but should be get very up, easy to achieve. Yeah, but look at how quickly it scales, Bogle. It doesn't stay cheap. Like, not everybody's going to be able to get a level uh, 8 tower, right? Not everybody's no. going to get that 20% bonus, no. that 20% bonus to enchantment level. Not everybody's going to get that. But a lot of people can get that 4 and 5 tower. Mm -hmm. And that's still really good. Yeah. That's... That's an incredibly good bonus. 10% uh, extra resources, 40% extra enchantment rate. That, that's very good. I got to tell you, that's uh, this is the kind of stuff I wanted to see by upgrading these towers. Mm -hmm. People are going to want to have that T8. That's that's a dom. When you say like, well, uh, T8s remain the same until you give them 20% extra in your territories. Well, suddenly your guild gets 20% extra than everybody else does, theoretically. If you can 20%. get all of them. Because the, the bonus yeah. applies to all of the resources. It's not just the for whole your zone. guild. Yeah. Right, so yeah, it's the whole zone. It makes the whole zone more valuable and more attractive. Mm -hmm. But assuming you live there, um, you have the best means to defend that. So mm -hmm. it, it's... Um, it's it, it, it's interesting, but valuable. And, you know, the whole risk-reward thing of Albion... That's one of these examples. Um, but you know there are people who are going to want to get that tower up as high as possible and keep it there. Hmm. Earn it and own it. And I really hope that people do. I hope that becomes like a thing that people do is they live out of their cities again and create something where you know that if you go to this zone, you're going to get a fight because somebody who defends their stuff lives there. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to be able to do. When... When I was really, uh, my favorite, like I, I keep saying my favorite times are like when you knew that if you went to the other continent, there were certain people that lived in certain areas that you could just go raid. And they would be there living in their territories all day. Hammer and Sickle was really well known for being uh, around 
certain territories at certain times of the day and they were just there and they were there in numbers and you were guaranteed a fight. And I hope that kind of gameplay returns where you see people going, you know what? Uh, we've only got like 15 people right now. Let's try to go for a quick ganking raid and we'll try to get like seven or eight of them and then just bounce. See if we can't get them to call a CTA to us and then and be gone by the time they all start arriving because then we just wasted their time and we took their gankers. It'd be a good time. Let's laugh about it. Mm. I miss that gameplay. Yeah. Um, I saw one question in chat that I want to um, mention or talk about really briefly. Will we know what level an enemy guild's tower is for a zone? So, uh, so since the test server is not up, I don't know if the UI has the information from the map uh, based on experience, maybe not. Um, but pr if you are in that zone, I mean, the bonuses of that zone should be visible on the UI somewhere. I, I just don't know, honestly. So the theoretical answer is yes, it should be the case because you would want to know what kind of zones are buffed and what zones are less you know developed um mm -hmm. but i couldn't walk you through immediately how to find it but i think yeah we haven't yes. we will look at this again we will look at the map again i think that as this comes out the map is something that we're going to spend a lot of time on and talking about over and over and over again so hmm. tune in on the 20th as we examine the map <laughs> and see yes. how it works in practice rather than in theory yes yes but i think it's time that we talk about territorial control because we're at 30 minutes, Bogle, and I want to go over this. All right, all right. Let me scroll Give it at up. least 10 minutes. Open world territorial battles. Dear Albion players, with Queen, the way territory control is determined changes. Territory ownership is not decided by five versus five anymore, but instead by open world battles. Hmm. Mm. Territorial warfare has always been a big and important part of Albion's DNA. All right, okay. It is, it is, it's important. Yes, in the past it was fought only, oh, purely with GVGs. Um, while we really like the high competitive gameplay of that, we also figured out it, its exclusivity, that's a word, mm -hmm. was not good for the game. Okay, well, that's the history. We talked about this many times on the show. Um, it had a very low engagement rate, and if you got stomped, it was really punishing. So... Um, not a lot of people participated and with queen that will change towards a open world conquer sort of style and all members of a guild can thus through zvz help with that yeah i think it's important to get more people involved we've talked about this mm -hmm. one of the issues we had with zvz's in the current iterations are that people like to get advantages of course and one of these advantages was just putting every mom and grandma in that zone and locking it so you can't even have a fight to deny fights mm -hmm. and that will be a thing of the past hopefully because there will be a thing called the smart cluster queue um, that sort of balances that and uh, allows for more fair fights or at least denies the option of zone locking so fights can't even happen. Um, combined with uh, number balance uh, with a disarray debuff, um, so that if you just bring too many to a zone, that is a theoretical logistical problem for your, your group, your alliance, and that should come with some negative side effects. So there are some some options to fight off that n plus one strategy that mm -hmm. is very common in these situations but uh yeah still well bringing well, people here's to the thing. take stuff is the thing yeah you have to have numbers to do it and there is i believe there's a saturation point but we've we've seen a lot of the top alliances and guilds that participate in a lot of those top alliances moving or cutting their numbers so that they're not so big we're seeing a lot we saw a lot of four thousand man alliances before that was the number mm -hmm. you know you'd have your four thousand people would push to seven and we had that one 10k alliance now even that 10k alliance just cut 45 guilds and it's down to 30 guilds arch that was the that was the 10k alliance that was the guild that everybody knew was larger than everybody else mm -hmm. they just said you know what we're gonna go to half our numbers Hmm. Like, 
Yeah. Like they're gonna they're gonna cut again. I hear okay, wow. Um, but you see, like Squawk, the mm-hmm. the traditional squad uh, alliance is down to half of its old numbers under two K. Last I looked, they might have more now. I know that they're gonna be bringing in Black Order eventually. That will raise their numbers. So there's. It's going to be interesting. The one that I think is going to get bigger and the one that I think is going to really grow. And we should, if people are concerned about a mega alliance, the alliance I'm concerned about is Poe. Mm. That guy is good at, by that guy, I mean Syndic, give him credit, very good at leading large num- large numbers of men in the above world sense. Not in the ZVZ sense, which he's becoming better at. He's becoming a better ZVZ shot caller. But being able to control the map itself Mm. he was very very good at but right now a lot of the top players and top guilds are specifically in the mindset of they don't want that to happen and they're making sure their alliance isn't going to allow for that i've heard rumors of some hand holding early on Mm -hmm. and like deciding that you know we're all going to go here we're all going to go here and we're all going to here but the more i talk to these guys i don't think that's happening anymore I don't think that ever was a real thing. And I Last think that was like, well, no, I think that it was just rumors. I think that I it see. was just the, the rumors that always occur because people believe there's handholding. Hmm. But I think that there's some real animosity here right now and that people are really interested in putting the crush down. Like, I don't want to reveal any information from our interview yesterday, hmm. but it was good. It was with the leader of Black Order, actually the second place guild. I think we should mention that really briefly. Uh, yeah, congratulations! They passed. They passed RAQ last night. Yeah. So congratulations to them. They are at a five hundred points difference. So anything can happen depending on how these two guys, uh, two guilds, are going to deal with the last few days. So we mm-hmm. are getting a race in the last few days, which is cool. And I also saw Money Guild, uh, you know, make like. 10k points um which is a thing maybe they will go for crystal too interesting Mm -hmm. but let's get back to let's talk about how these territories are captured all right Mm -hmm. we've we've talked about what we want out of them we've talked about those things let's talk about the actual mechanics of capturing them uh yeah wow so uh let's go right into this claiming an unclaimable territory is not changed just go to a tower pay the silver fee complete the channel However, since there we will introduce so many new territories at once, the territories will be will remain unclaimable until season 8 starts. With the season starts, towers will become claimable at two major time zones to give as many guilds as possible a chance to claim one. Towers will be claimable at those invasion times. February 1st, 2020, 18 UTC for the EU primetime clusters and the 2nd of February 2020 at 1 UTC primetime clusters. Oh. What about the other primetime clusters? Well, no, that's uh, that's all of them. Hello, Richman. What about the other ones? Hmm. Oh. Okay. We don't know. On invasion days, <laughs> the land of Albion will keep <laughs> will still keep reclaiming its territory, so all guilds will have to reconquer them on invasion days, like in prior seasons. So, oh gosh, be there to claim your T7 tower, guys. Don't let that go. Uh, uh. This is relevant, this date, the 1st of February and the 2nd of February, because that is after Queen, that is sort of, that is actually the start of season eight. Mm-hmm. and that is 10 days away from the launch of the patch and that is relevant because a lot of people want to put down hideouts into the zones where they plan to live but to attack hideouts if you don't catch them red-handed doing it at that exact time or 20 hours later after they put it down then these hideouts will be fairly secure until the season eight starts. Mm -hmm. So once you've established your hideout, 
during the launch window of Queen, we won't potentially see too many fights about established ones because it's not possible because you can't make them vulnerable through owning a territory. Hmm. We talked about that in detail yesterday, how hideout attacking works, but basically what territory towers allow you to do in a nutshell is allow you to declare attacks on hideouts in that zone, in that cluster. And this will be possible starting on the February 1st. Um, and but then... in order to do that, you have to take the tower. Right. Right. And there's two ways to take tower. They talked about it, the invasion. That's the first way, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's the other way. Once somebody already controls that tower, mm -hmm. you have to declare an attack. Attack that great. <laughs> <laughs> Should I read this? <laughs> yes, please do. <laughs> One, two, three, English. <clears throat> attack declarations are made directly at the enemy territory. In order to declare an attack, you need to first take out the sentry mage. When the sentry mage is defeated, the tower's defenses are disabled, and now you can go to the tower and declare an attack. The actual fight over that territory will happen at the next day at its cluster prime time. Mm-hmm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So there is no more launching from a position you already own in the world to other nope. territories. You just mm -hmm. walk up to the just tower. walk up. Go get it. Get the mage. Mm -hmm. And then declare an attack for the next day. Yeah. Which is... And then you have to attack it again. Right, right. And then, then you can take it. Um, so it's interesting. It says, hey... Your war camp is your tower. Hmm? The war camp that you would normally have to go to to defend your territories is now the tower itself. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So somebody has to walk into your your base, not adjacent area, not the neighboring territory, walk into your, your home, mm -hmm. slam on the door and say, hello, we've killed all your mages. Would you like to play tomorrow? And whether they want to play tomorrow or not, you're going to show up. And then try to take that tower. And then you have to take it down again. And I believe there's another boss. And it actually despawns. <laughs> oh, so the um, so you have to walk up, kill the mage, right? That's mm -hmm. the boss, the sentry mage. Uh, and once you did that, then you can attack the uh, declare the attack for 2 million silver. And then at the start of the territory's prime time, I think that's also called battle time in the other mm -hmm. post, um, then the fight will happen. Um, 15 minutes before that time slot on the next day, the sentry mage will despawn. <gasps> Wait, what? And then, because that disables the tower laser, which is the base mm -hmm. defense, which is pretty important. Yeah. It's um, and then you can try to channel it like you would when you try to... Oh, you know, so it's it. it's just you have to stop... The, the boss becomes the guild that wants to defend it. Mm, sort of. Okay. Sort of. All right. Interesting. So you come the next day. Mm -hmm. There's no defenses at that tower anymore. Like, well, I mean, they might still have guards, right? Does it still get the guards? Anything about guards despawning mm, Bogle? No, just the sentry mage. That just the sentry mage and the laser beam. Right. All right. So then you have to get to your tower... Ooh, this can be tricky then because you have to get all the way from your home plot to your tower. In other situations, like when they come after your, your hideout, mm -hmm. you know, you can just spawn at your hideout. But now you got to run from your hideout to your tower. Oh, this could get interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But I like that the sentry mage is there beforehand. Uh, gives them the ability to, okay, all right. Still has a laser beam for a while. Yeah. They can't come too early. And just block you out of your, your territory. I like that. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, of course, the battleground is in the open world and not instanced, which is always good to hear. So everybody can just, you know, take part with uh, in the action. Mm -hmm. And um, then I suppose the interesting uh, number thing here is that a channel to conquer lasts 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. but can't be interrupted by damage, only by only hard, hard CC. C. C. 
What is yeah. hide and see? That's like a stun. Mm. Okay. Or a lift into the air. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or a sleep. <laughs> or, no, I think that's it. Stun, sleep, and like knock mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. I think that counts as, well, I guess you could technically a knock back would be a hard CC because you'd knock them off of the tower I think location, so. that is irrelevant to figure out exactly which kind of attacks prevent that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know offhand and I don't see any uh, explanation anywhere as to what hard CC is. But I think that is something to figure out um, what that exactly is. And of mm-hmm. course, if you are the um, defending guild, you can also channel the thing yourself to end the attack. Um, and in case nobody channels, after 30 minutes, the defender wins per default. Okay. Yeah. That, that works. Sounds pretty straightforward. <coughs> let's talk about the benefits. We've yeah. already talked about the upgrades a bit and I'm, the upgraded benefits. But let's like talk, talk about the basic benefits of siphoning mages mm-hmm. and territory NPCs like guards and whatnot. What do we got there, Bogle? Uh, season points and siphoned energy for the guilds. And that applies both for resource and quote-unquote farming territories. So you will have defenses and season gen- season point generating things in both of these towers equally, I think. Um, and of course, in the center, there's that devastating beam laser thing that gives you a sort of fallback. Um, okay. Yeah, it, it says here, which I think is interesting. Lastly, territories are not meant as a home for a guild, but more as a strategic goal to fight over during guild warfare. Therefore, territory territory ownership should be more easily changed. To provide a home for guilds, we introduced the new hideouts. So that's... Okay. So, yeah, they, they still think that, you know, okay, so they want that territory to go back and forth as you lose it, start getting attacked, have to go take it back. It does seem like it's harder to defend. Hmm. It does seem like you can you could lose it pretty easy. Especially if you don't have a hideout in that zone, right? Oh, yeah, that'd be real hard. Yeah. Yeah. You, well, not real, just harder. It's easier if you have a hideout in there. You can get there easier. But if, say, it's uh, just a territory you own that's five territories away from your closest home plot, hmm. that's a real pain in the butt. And you better really want to get that territory for a reason. Maybe you need to destroy a couple of home plots, or hideouts, sorry, destroy a couple of hideouts so you can place your own. <laughs> Because yeah. they do have caps, and there are going to be hideouts that get destroyed just so that somebody can get themselves in there because that zone is over the cap, and they want you out of their way. You got that mm. prime juicy spot right in front of a Hellgate? No, you don't, son. Not anymore. <laughs> Somebody's going to get kicked. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, but we went over... Go ahead. I d- yeah, I think you're, you already started. I don't think we need to go into... Uh, all the details as to how to upgrade these uh, in all the de- uh, specifics because that's just a long thing. Basically, if you win Crystal League matches that you started from that tower, um, which are equal or higher, no, which are equal to the, the level of the tower, then you can upgrade it if you win. If you lose, nothing happens. Um, if you lose constantly, then it is a time thing so after a certain amount of time a tower would automatically uh, de-level or decay if you don't win once so um you know if you want to however if you get it to a higher level then you know 29 days 15 days is a good amount of time um to keep that tower hmm yeah hmm all right bogle Yes. It's been a 50-minute show, and we didn't even get through the two topics that we had today. We still have a little bit more to go, but I think it's time to end the show. Say goodbye to everyone. Tell them where they can find us next. Do the shout-outs. Give out the raffles. Maybe show a video. What do you think? Sounds good. Um, one last thing again if you want to look at this yourself there is the queen super post that has all the links to that go to the albion forums and then you can find that there Uh, i will also link it in twitch chat for everybody who just checked this out now 
and then we can hop over to shout out what what did you want to do well let's do the video first um and while we play the video i want everybody to go ahead and take a look at the twitch chat see if their names were drawn i'm going to end this raffle right now i just drew these names don't enter the raffle right now wait because i'm archiving the raffle we're going to start a new one but i pulled six names for 750. that's a lot mm. of names for 750 guys i want you to get your gold that's that's the point here get your gold and then we're gonna do another raffle after shout outs one for seven one for 17 and one for 37. all right so bogle why don't you go play that video um do you want to introduce it i well, i guess we can uh I did a version of the Battle of Carleone video. Okay. That's good enough. Yeah. Yeah, it's let's go ahead then. They're becoming stronger. We can no longer hold them back. Carleon will fall. Don't worry about him. The guilds of Albion. So heavily invested in this great city. The lot of fault in these invaders. But my lord, everyone is evacuating Kalyan. That's unfortunate. I want you to arrange a meeting with the heads of the five cities. I think that it's time we show these Avalonians that Don Kalyan has friends. A couple of days of practice but guys i'm gonna practice again today and tomorrow mm -hmm. we're gonna do fanfic fridays with the donna carlian mm. do you want to give it a freelance no freestyle go right now just well so. i can do a little bit right now as like a preview of what you might get tomorrow for an extended conversation with my good partner bogle well, I work with on many different topics and a couple of different projects that we've got in the works for the next few weeks to make sure the Kalyan stands and doesn't have this catastrophe befall it that these people seem to think is going to be coming and just destroy us all. I don't believe it. And neither should you. Nice. So, nice. We'll get more of that tomorrow. Cool. Okay. Okay. I'm very much looking forward to that. Tomorrow is Friday, Fanfic Friday, and we will try to do something there. But that's, I suppose, the end of the show. Um, don't forget to do that Carleon event on Sunday, 21 UTC. And I think what's left is to go over shout outs. Shout outs. Shout outs and more raffles. Uh, I'm about to create it right now. So when you see it go into the chat and says, the raffle's available, hit your raffle button. There you go. Now it's up. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. What do we have today? We already answered one question. I remember that. Mr. Duckling asks, do we need an inscription for Battle of Carleon or just show there? Where can we collect free gear from Dawn and what level is it? Can newbies join? Are there any rewards or is it just massive PVE? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it. W what do we know about it, Bogle? We know that it's PVE and uh, we assume that you get the gear from the Dawn. Um, other than that, no, I have no uh, no answers for you other than that. Like, that's it. I imagine that it's PvP starting at 20 UTC outside of the first gate. And then from then on, I'm guessing every hour or I don't know, whenever the prime times are for those different portals. Hmm. I'm not sure. We don't have a good answer for that. But I'm going to be here doing it. Okay, cool. 
I mean, I personally think they will just spawn tons of constructs and Avalonians around these portals and then you get free gear somewhere and then you can try to beat these um, until there is probably an inevitable end. And the interesting thing is whether or not there will be groups who try to avoid the constructs and farm the players. Uh, and if uh, there is any sort of reason to fight constructs instead of players or how this all will work so i i'm i'm looking forward to this what people made make out of this sandboxy event and uh, yeah i don't know how the servers are going to handle it pogo mm. what does what happens when there are two thousand people in carleon i don't know <laughs> that's how we burn carleon down we overload the server <laughs> we overload the server the server literally melts uh mm. oh god mm. no all right we figured it out, guys. We've wanted to end this city for a long time, and we figured out how to do it. All right. Let's see. What do we got? We got Fun Stealer saying, oh, gosh. Squawk! <laughs> what? <sighs> Hoonie boy. Mm -hmm. A bogle, 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 bogle. <laughs> Fun Stealer. Chosen, you special pink flower princess fairy. No, that's my daughter. She's the pink flower princess fairy. And she's adorable. We call her Clover. Um, Sturmwolf DK, let's collect for a romantic night for Fun Stealer and Pando in a hotel room so they can sort their issues. Okay. Maybe they just need a, a meeting with the Dawn to uh, make peace. <laughs> Maybe wait. They'll sit down with the Don. Hmm. We need to have a, a sit down and go over our differences. <laughs> Excellent thing again. Shouts out, brave newbie is recruiting. Our goal is to help new players learn the game and give them a great environment to have fun in. Zero obligation, zero tax, and lots of opportunities for content in most areas of the game brave newbies and exxon fang check that out excellent oh <laughs> alex alexander uh -huh. alexander mm -hmm. brave newbie is a fucking potato farm don't join it <laughs> <laughs> all right i say join them and i have sent a lot of players there because i see the work they put in the people who run that guild really care about the game mm -hmm. and i don't care how many potatoes they farm you know they can get all the potatoes i don't care i've had a potato guild or two what's a potato i might, guild? I might make, make new potato guilds every week just because it's easier than actually uh running a guild i'm not saying i do it i might but i saying gaming what, says what, what is a potato guild sorry but a potato guild is a guild you design for new or inexperienced players that you just fill with players with the intent of either getting them to donate large amounts of resources oh. or um, pay high taxes. And you don't offer them anything in the way of content or entertainment or resources or uh, really mm. anything besides a place to pay you money. Farm. But I'm going to tell you, I have some experience with Brave Newbies. And uh, I think they the are name not is potato. called Brave Newbie. Because if you say brave new beast, then you get into trouble with Eve. Well, no, it's the, I and... know I know more than one of them, though. I know more than one oh, no. brave new. Oh. I like I know a few of them. They spell and it awkwardly too. Yeah, it, that guild, its members try hard <laughs> to be good for their guild and their members. Mm, okay. It's not a ripoff guild, and I don't mind giving them a ton of shoutouts because I need new players to have a place to go, and that one seems safe compared to some of the other places I've seen. I will say in gaming, I will say in for nothing, Kappa. I don't know what that means, but I believe him. Uh, Sam Hexo, I love squad. I love hand holding. Sam, I'm glad you love to hold hands. Maybe you could do better in three days than sex or sucks. Chris, whatever his name is, he had three days. Maybe you could do better. Let's see. Fun Stealer, $75 in esports. I don't know what that means. I don't even know what that's a reference to. I, I have no idea a, who he's... That's a diz for Sam Hexel. I... Mm. Sam, 
if he made 75 bucks, that's pretty good. <laughs> Dead Lizard. So hideouts aren't attackable till the beginning of the season on Feb 1st. No, they are attackable. They're attackable a couple of times. When they first are placed, there's 20 minutes. You Okay. So at the beginning of every territory's battle phase, which is their prime time hour, for the next four hours, hideouts can be placed. If you place a hideout, the next 20 minutes, it can be attacked. And then the next day, the next day, at the prime time beginning, mm -hmm. somewhere between 23.1 hours and 18.1 hours, you, sir, your tower there, that hideout in that area will become vulnerable again for 20 minutes and can be attacked again. So twice, and that's it. And then 10 days, it's good. You're golden. Hmm. Unless you put it down on day three, then you have seven days. Unless you put it down on day five, then you have five. You get the idea. All right. That is answered. Shout out to Chosen for making a way better trailer than SB. Oh. No. That's not the way it was. That no, he, I used their trailer. I didn't make a trailer. I just put words over their trailer. That's a very good trailer. I like the way they did it. It has a lot of emotion to it. I just didn't like one single aspect of it, and I tried to do that part better. I think that's an awesome trailer. I love that character, and I wanted to just see him done better. That's it. It's a good trailer. Bohnenkraut Saft, which means uh, bean cabbage juice. Uh, says that uh, he wants a giveaway for a tier 8 Avalonian fishing rod, please. Sad um, news, guys. I can't give away player stuff anymore. Like, I can't take stuff from you guys and give it away, and I'm way too cheap to buy it myself. So, wait, I can't. Are you saying I have to do it? Yep. What? I didn't sign up for this. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, let's see what happens. No. Maybe we can get you a raise, Bogle, and, or a bonus, and then you can use that raise money to um, give away to stuff. To buy gold codes to give away? No, to buy gold codes to then use for fishing rods and then give away fishing rods? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. I almost shot coffee out of my nose. That would be good footage. There was about that. Yeah, it would clean out that mucus in my nose. I'm doing this voice all day. <laughs> I think we right, should... I'm pulling two raffles. Do that... Uh, redone trailer once more and then unless there's other organizational things to say i suppose we need to remind everybody that tomorrow on friday there's another quote-unquote invasion day then on saturday there is not uh, on sunday there is the end of season event at 21 utc and then on monday it's queen day um, downtime starts at 10 UTC and we don't know how long they plan on having the thing down but it's probably not super fast so if you you know want to get into your guild discord and you know draw something together or play funny flash games to flash games together or something is that even a thing it was anyways that's a thing you could prepare for tomorrow other than that uh, See you tomorrow. See you Sunday. And last words before we end today's show. Now you're, now you're typing. What are you typing? Uh, people are asking if we have a link for that video. Not yet. No, not yet. No. No. Um, I think we're going to put it up on our YouTube later today uh, if we can log in. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, it'll be on Albion Informer. Well, sure. It'll, it'll be up. I'll, tomorrow, we'll play it again and we'll give a link to everybody. Sorry, the link isn't available for everyone yet. And uh, yeah, I didn't think anybody would actually want it. Well, uh, thanks everybody for watching. Um, I will play the trailer one more time. And then after that, we will be right out of here. Unless you have any last words chosen. Yeah, I, I did the, the raffles again, and nobody claimed the raffles. How do I claim Just the raffle? Sure. You message me. Oh. You whisper me. You send me a whisper, and it's like, hey, it's chosen. I won the raffle. That's a, just not hard. Just I won. Yay. Okay. 
maybe you'll put your name in chat once more. And okay. with that, say bye bye. Bye bye. You can catch us every day, uh, Monday through Friday at 18 UTC, right here on twitch.tv forward slash Albion Online, at least for one more week. And until then, wait, no, we'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, yeah tomorrow, Friday, 18 UTC, with a very special fanfic Friday. Okay, bye. See you guys. They're becoming stronger. We can no longer hold them back. Kalyan will fall. Don't worry about it. The guilds of Albion too heavily invested in this great city. A lot of fault in these invaders. But, my lord, everyone is evacuating Kalyan. That's unfortunate. I want you to arrange a meeting with the heads of the five cities. I think that it's time we show these Avalonians that Don Kalyan has friends. For the sake of Kerlian, I hope you're right. For our sake, I hope you're right. <laughs>